Yes, I am out repossessing the day after back surgery, as well as see in my last video, I went out and snagged one the day of, just hours after having that surgery done. I put the link to it in the description of the video. I'm going to go uh, put one of those little boxes that pops up on the video as well that you can click on that will link you right out to the YouTube video that shows you the procedure that I had done. But we uh, had a double header come over. Oh, by the way, I'm feeling much better today. I don't even have the crutches with me, as you can see. And no passenger, no helper. Uh, feeling a lot better today. I mean, I've got the pain meds and stuff, but you know, without the pain meds, I can, it hurts. But uh, with uh, only 10, 15 milligrams of oxycodone, I am able to uh, get up and get out do what I've got to do. I can't do any lift, heavy lifting for a number of weeks, which is understandable, but uh, the truck does all the heavy lifting. All I pretty much got to do is back up to the vehicle and, you know, but I can't throw the dollies. So I've got to look at each repossession that comes over and make the determination as to whether it's feasible for me to do uh, or whether I need to get a lending hand. We're like six foot, 10 inches. I'm not sure if we will fit under six foot ten inches. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna say no. So we will not be pulling into this parking garage with the truck. But yeah, I'm just a few blocks over from my house on this doubleheader. It's two white vehicles, a car and a truck, a Bonneville and a GMC Sierra. 2500 should be in this apartment complex right here. There's an upper parking lot. If you go around the front onto 1200 West, you can pull in the middle between these two buildings and uh, there is a little parking lot up there. I was kind of hoping that they told me that they wanted to get at least one of the two vehicles to get his attention. They didn't say don't get both vehicles. I mean, if both are here, I'll probably hook one. GPS the other, but uh, the way this place is laid out, it's got two underground parking garages. So what I'm gonna do is, I, don't, I think this one's probably too low, just as same design and everything. So I'm gonna park right here. I'm gonna go on foot real quick. I usually roll through these on my motorcycle, but I forget about the bike, the way my back is. Too stiff of a ride. I can handle sitting down in a nice, cushy, soft seat. Driving around, that's not hard at all. You guys have seen me pull a number of uh, vehicles out of this parking garage. I am not seeing any white. That's not a Bonneville. The only white vehicle back there is a little. Chevy Cavalier, Saturn looking thing. And that's a GMC Sierra. We know ours is an extra cab though, that's just a single cab. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up these stairs. Walk by that upper parking lot. And then go back down the stairs to the other parking garage and see what's in there. Neither vehicle showing right now. My best guess would be if this is a good address, him and uh, probably a girlfriend or a wife drive both vehicles and they're both out during the day today at work. We do know that this is a previous account that we had assigned but then was closed before we ran it. And when I looked it up, it was out of the area far, far from here. So the guys moved into town. And it's not here in this upper parking lot. <clears throat> I 
Maybe the vehicle's down that side. And neither vehicle's down this side. There is no garage parking here, so quite, you know, closed garages, all open parking. So we'll have to come back by here tonight. Do the drive through again. And if we don't look into the vehicle here this evening, then probably a bad address. They said that they ran a, uh, Accurate search on the debtor, and it's still showing his out of the area address is his most current. That being the case, I mean, they got this address from him as an updated address in uh, April, so so just last month, the possibility that he just gave them this address to send us on a wild goose chase. We just have to always consider that. But we won't make that determination until we've done our night run. Go from there. Okay, so we checked the entire complex and area. You can see one of the white vehicles. So we're gonna go check a couple of other things on. Watch for both vehicles as we head out of the area. Oh, well, we got a white Bonneville right here. Six seven. Sitting right around the corner from the apartments. That's not our license plate, but it is a white Bonneville right around the corner, so I'm gonna back up and check the bin. 2979. That's awfully close for there to be a white Bonneville. So close. Funny, pull around the corner from the complex, and there's a white Bonneville sitting right there. But it's not the right bin. Seems to happen all the time, though. When you got your eyes open, you'll start to see the same color of your vehicles, same make, same model, but different year, things like that. Usually they're not that close, but could be that lucky. We'll come back in 3.42 now, probably about 7, make the 7 o'clock run, cruise through that complex real quick, and then hope we get lucky and find one of the two vehicles there, if not both of them, like I said, we'll pick one up and tag the other with a GPS device and see what he does, what the debtor does, and if only one of them is there, that's the one that will get taken, and if neither one is there, we don't have an apartment number on the uh, assignment, so I'm going to send a note over to the finance company right now and let them know that we do not have an apartment number, so we don't have a way that, you know, we don't, can't knock on a door. And I'd like to be able to verify whether this address is good or not. If both vehicles aren't showing up, we want to do that as quick as possible. The odds that both vehicles wouldn't be there and the address would be good kind of slim, so. Wow, we got some huge, huge clouds over the Salt Lake Valley right now. We've got a lot of wind today, so I know we've got a rainstorm coming in, according to the news. A beautiful day today, despite the wind. It's making it a lot cooler. Pretty clear skies, but that was just some huge rain clouds getting ready to dump on us. But fun, repoing. buddy of mine that uh, owns one of the largest repossession companies here in Utah sent me an email with a link in it to a new state bill that's been passed, was signed on April 1st by the governor, which makes it now a law, basically states that no private companies 
in the state of Utah can use advanced license plate recognition camera systems. So ALPR camera systems are now out in Utah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been, I set my system back to the company that I had gotten it from, which was MP Tracks a while ago. I haven't been running the camera, as you, you know, noticed in my recent videos, I've not been running the camera system and I've been looking at getting another one and putting it on this truck here. But uh, don't need to worry about that now because they have passed the state law stating as such. I'll uh, put a link up on here. You guys can click on it if anyone wants to go read it. Because uh, if they'll do it in Utah, they'll do it in other states as well. It's only a matter of time until they do it to everybody. We are back over here looking for this white Bonneville and this white 2500. GMC, Grand M. But yeah, I got out of the uh, ALPR business here in Utah just in time. I would have been shipping that stuff back right away if I uh, had already done so. Alright, now let's see the truck at the Bonneville, in the outside parking area, so I'm going to park the truck for a little walk through this one and we'll go over and we'll go through a little walk through the other one we'll know here pretty quick if we're dealing with a bad address we sent an email to the finance company and asked them if they had an apartment number for this guy and they said they did not so we can't knock on the door and verify it at least not until I find an apartment address on this guy I might connect to the internet here real quick and do a quick little search myself. Master files, maybe I can pull up the apartment number through master files. I'm coming up with a brand new address in Springville on this guy. This Orm address doesn't even show up in a search for him, so I'll be examining Springville. Get this data out of here. We'll take it over here to Evernote. Put it in here. Vernal, another one in Springville, Vernal, Provo, Heber, Springville, Spanish Fork. This guy's been all over the place. truck or the Bonneville was to be in here, I'd have to either stick a GPS device on it and have them bring it out tomorrow during the day, or I would have to uh, put the go-jacks on it and roll it all the way to the entrance because I cannot get my truck down in here. But based on that search I just did, it's looking like he may be down in Springville. Oh, I see the nose of what looks like a white Bonneville backed in all the way down there at the end. Okay, so it looks like we've got a couple addresses here in Springville we need to check. Got a new one that just came over on a 2001 GMC Jimmy. They say the color's blue, but then they put a question mark after the color, so that means they're not totally sure that it's blue for one reason or another. 
The notes say that the debtor just moved back from South Dakota, but yet I noticed that under the state for the plate, they put ND, which would be North Dakota, so I'm not sure if that's a typo or if they just moved back from South Dakota and happened to have North Dakota license plates or he meant to say that they just moved back from North Dakota and had North Dakota license plates, but whichever, we know that it most likely has out-of-state plates and is possibly blue. And that is the closest of the two addresses we're checking down here as we come into town. So we're going to go by that one first. If I zoom out here a little bit, the other one is straight south of here. So also one of the things I noticed is a lot of people you know, commented in my comment section about me uh, driving and paying attention to my laptop. And you got to realize that I can turn the camera towards the laptop screen and I can hold it there and for a long period of time and continue to be looking this way as I drive down the road and it gives the illusion that I am paying attention to the laptop and not watching the road and when you got to realize in reality I'm for the most part always watching the road and I only glance over at the laptop from time to time like this I don't sit here and stare at the laptop while I am actively driving but I can hold the camera on the screen and keep watching straight forward so uh, I'm seeing a blue Jimmy right here as I roll up on the address and it does have out-of-state plates and there's our Jimmy sitting right there it's got the North Dakota plates on it gotta love it when they're just sitting right on target this vehicle should be rear wheel drive. It does have four wheel drive, most likely, but since the weather is good, the chances that the four wheel drive is engaged is most likely not the case. So, Let's see which one it happens to be. It is. North Dakota. The blinds are open. I'll wait for this vehicle to drive by. Make sure our traffic's clear both ways. Well, there's nobody answering the door. It looks like they have room for another vehicle to park right here. So, 
get this transported. Let the finance company work on getting the key from the gutter later. We tried, right? blocks and do a drive-by on this other address while we're in the area. This is the uh, skip address I found on that double header we were looking for, the white Bonneville and the white GMC 2500. They both haven't been showing up at that apartment complex over in Orem off 12th West. We've done a day and a night run on that complex and neither people showing up there. And we have information that the debtor gave them that address uh, just a less than a month ago and so we ran a skip locate after neither vehicle showing up on the day and night run and we don't have an apartment number so we aren't able to knock on any doors to verify if it's a good address that way and so uh, we ran a skip locate report and came up with a newer address here in Springville and I'm going to uh, just do a drive by here and we'll see if either vehicle showing there or what's there and then uh, towards the freeway get this transport. If it turns out that one or both of the vehicles are there, I'll uh, pull down the street out of sight and we'll grab tracking devices and we'll uh, put them on both vehicles. And uh, after we get this one dropped off, then come back and get ourselves whatever we've got tracking devices on. If it goes that way, we shall see in just a second. So this address, that red car right there, is actually a repo that we came out here to get once. It was all the way in that backyard. There was a boat parked right there. And uh, we made contact and the debtor ended up making his payment. So we never had to uh, repossess that red car. But now that red car is up on the side of the house there. And it's accessible. I'm going to have to call the finance company on that one. Also, this is that address that we got that white Mustang from that uh, it's actually one of my more popular videos it gets a lot of hits uh, I think the name of the video is this job is all about timing that's where we got that Mustang from right there on the corner so it's an active street for us but the weird thing is is I've been to that address I know that that's not the name of this guy but he's I know that when we knocked on the door he had roommates and I'm trying to remember if what was parked out. I'm going to have to go back and actually watch that video of me, because uh, there was something parked in the driveway, and it was white. It was a white truck. But I kind of remember it being a Ford F-150, not a GMC 2500. And I don't remember whether there was ever a Bonneville there or not. But I know that he had roommates and stuff. There's a two-car garage there, too. So we'll have to... That's interesting, that, that, that address. I thought it sounded familiar, too, but you never know until you actually get down here. Uh, the garage does have windows. You can see inside, see what's parked in there. Six, that's why it's not coming up. It's a six on a five. Yep, same last name. It is a family member. Yep, this guy's first name is on this red car that we were after. And the debtor I'm looking for is it's probably his brother. So we know this is a good address for his car sitting right there on the side of the house. And when the finance officer sees that I called him, 
actually calls me back, I'm going to ask him what the deal is on this, if he paid off the loan or what, because we can get to that vehicle and he may have us just pick that up, because before it was inaccessible and so we couldn't repo it. This is a different finance company, so two different finance companies as well. And we'll knock on the door and see if it's home. flat tires. Registration goes all the way back to 06. That boat's gone. Some 35 inch tires back here. Looks like someone just got new tires. Here's some rims off of a Ram pickup truck. This is Matt. Hey, um, you remember that account you sent me out here in Springfield for? for it's got the red car that was in the backyard that we couldn't get to because the boat was in the way and then we got him to make a payment and we closed it and built it as an attempt. It, it, anyways, I'm out here at the same address. I've got, I'm now looking for a for another finance company, and I found, and this address came up as a skip address, and I'm out here. Neither one of my vehicles are here, but your little red car is um, now accessible. It's on the side of the house, almost to the street. I didn't know if you what happened with that. Did you pay that off, or what happened? Yeah, let me know. Bye. Yeah, so he's not the office right now, so he's going to call the office and have his receptionist assistant check the uh, database and see if he's current on that loan or what the deal is, if someone made a payment, if he's behind, whatever, but that might actually turn into a repo for us today. And I decided not to knock on the door, I'm going to hold off for a minute until we get more information because if we do end up having to repo the red car, I don't want them to know that we're looking for his brother been a repo man around today so we're gonna hold off on contact until we know more but there are rims back there and tires that can fit the truck the tires at least those rims were off of a dodge we're looking for a gmc but was there was a couple sets of tires and there's even a set of smaller wheels that definitely were going to bonneville and we know for a fact they're the same last name so definitely a family member there so that's a good link to our account. Put notes in about it and we'll get this vehicle in the back transported. So we're not plugging it all over the place and we're gonna keep working on this double header as well as some other stuff we got today.